All right, everybody. I said that I would try to do a little bit of uh, documentation with uh, with my install of the Phoenix 16-inch Tesla style. Um, so that's what I do. I'm kind of starting already into the project. I already have the old head unit and stuff pulled out, um, but it's really not that hard. There's basically four bolts and you have to, uh, whatever side of the trim you pull off, you basically got to stand outside the vehicle and, and kind of grab onto it with both hands and just kind of pinch and rock it back and forth and try to pull it straight out. Um, if you got all kinds of shiny detailing stuff on there, you might want to get that off. It's kind of hard to grab onto. Uh, anywho. So, here's what we got. There she is. <laughs> a little bit of a difference. Anyway, lots of wires. I haven't figured this part out yet, but Phoenix has some videos. So when I ordered this, they give you three choices for the trim color. Um, matte black, which I'm kind of wishing I would have ordered now. Too late. Um, silver. And then if you got a TRD, they said it's TRD black. Well, they said it's gloss black, but it's right in the description. Same as TRD Pro. And from what I know, the TRD Pro black is the same color. It's kind of like a dark silver with some metal flake in it. They're not the same. Not even close. So let's look at that. All right, there's stock. Mine's a 2017. So uh, maybe they're this all black now. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's definitely not the same. This is just black, and that is not black over here. Anyway. All right, before I go any further, I know kind of a big thing some people are worried about when they do this is what's the quality of the trim? You know, when you're moving all the buttons and, you know, getting rid of this. Now it's all up here. What's the quality like? It's pretty good. Other than not being the right color. I'm currently sitting in a garage. It's about 1 in the morning. Waiting for the UPS guy to show up and he never did. So, oh well. You have to remove your vents. You put in your stock vents. The outside, that came with this. You can see they're still on here. When you pull them out, you don't have to, first thing I did was unscrew the two screws and you don't have to do that. But anyway, quality's pretty good. Um, it's hard to hear because I got the heater going. It's about 10 degrees outside, 15 or something. They're good, they don't rock back and forth, they're not loose. Uh, compare, the, compare the buttons. A little... There's a little bit of play in them, but they're not terrible. Let's give them a... If this is a, a 10 on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say these are about a... I don't know, 8? 7, 8, maybe even a 9. Now in the video they said you have to take your, your airbag lights out. What I'm confused is there's only one airbag light in my vehicle, in my 2017, so I don't know. Like I said, not all these wires go to it. Some of the wires are for different model years. But things I'm totally confused on, like this is a SIM card um, antenna. So why do SIM cards need antennas? I don't understand that. They're like, that didn't make any sense. And I've got my, this has the capability to read everything on your ECM. And I'm not sure, but possibly even control some of it. And I comes with the 
plug-in, but then I believe this also works as well with the wireless. This was like seven bucks extra. And then I also had to buy, where to go? Oh, it's sitting on top of it. That is a wireless Apple CarPlay dongle. That was like, I think 35 bucks extra. These come in, these come in three different, um, they say size, it's not, they're all the same size, but different uh, RAM and ROM. So basically how powerful, how fast they go and how much um, memory they have. I bought the biggest one because it's only like $100 more. And then with a discount, I, I paid, for everything I paid like 800 bucks, I think. So not that bad. This is all the, this is the stock. You take out your stock um, USB that goes there and it comes with two extra that you plug in from the back and then you put in your um, your lighter, your cigar lighter. And what else? Yeah, um, I guess that's as far as I'm going to go for this second until I get a little further. Cheers. Uh, something that I forgot to mention is that Harbor Freight, they sell, there's two more besides this, um, basically pl plastic trim interior removal tools. I think Harbor Freight had them on sale for like $5. Now, you don't really have to use them to get off the trim in the vehicle, but they came in handy for popping out the tabs on the uh, for the vents. Flip this over and I'll show you. Okay. So when you pop them out, there's tabs on the side, two on the bottom, two on the top. What I did is basically take one hand, pull straight up, and one's on the top. Just take it in and push it. Push that guy right there. Stick this in and push it out. Lift up, it'll pop. And then lift up, pop. You can also push up on this, but I didn't want to do that and risk cracking it. And once you do that, I basically stuck him <clears throat> down here and pushed out. And the other side, and there's two in the middle too, but they just kind of came out on their own. When you pull this out of the dashboard, there are a lot of things that you you have to unplug. And this thing, it's funny, this thing weighs about twice as much as this. So, never knew there was a fan on these. It's pretty cool. All of the these top two rows, the buttons you got to push are on top. I found it easier to hold on to this with one hand. If you have somebody that can hold it for you, that'd be ideal. And then basically take these guys and just pushed in on that little tab with uh, my left hand and stuck my other fingers around the wires and pulled all in one motion. The ones on this bottom row, they're on the bottom. So, I don't know, it takes a while and I was afraid that I scratched up the screen. Probably should have put down like a, if I would have put down like a rag or something or like a towel, fold it up, you could probably set this on top of the uh, shift knob, but I didn't do that. You know, I just tried to wing it. <laughs> Something that I forgot. When you pull, you got to take out the stock um, your blinker button there, hazard warning light button. And it looks, it looks like you got to pop the black tabs, but there's black tabs and then there's gray tabs inside of it and you pop the gray tabs so this is flipped up side down you pop those gray tabs and it just pushes straight out and it clicks right in except now this isn't working hmm well that's not good let's fix that all right that was user error i don't know it's kind of tight like the tolerances around it are kind of tight but i just did it a couple times and it popped up so all right, let's, uh, this isn't my garage, by the way. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's my sister's garage. I don't have a heated garage. All right. So where am I here? I guess I still need to pull out all this, maybe. And this probably has to come out. 
and I'm not sure what it was, but when you probably don't need to pull all of them out because they're just connected to each other. But uh, I'm not really sure which ones they were. So, all right. Part two or three or five. Yeah, passenger. In the video they said you got to take that out, but I'm not sure why you have to take it out. All right, I got it out. You have to take the trim on the center console. It just pull straight up. Um, do yourself a favor and make sure you trim your fingernails first, unless you uh, like breaking your fingernails off, which I just did, kind of. There were two more bolts. I just clicked straight up, and then I had to take the shift knob off for the if you yeah for that guy. Um, if you don't have a TRD, you've got the rotary dial, there's probably another wire. Oh, and there's a wire over here that you got to disconnect to. This guy right here. This one was kind of hard to get off. And then there's a piece in front that's right there that slides forward, pops straight up. Other than that, the center piece, once you get the two bolts off, just pulls straight out. And there are three connectors on the back, I believe. No, this goes up here, two connectors in the back. Now we got a conundrum, as usual. Let me turn my light off here. Hold on. We got a conundrum. This right here, gotta get the, uh, the lighter, the cigar lighter out and the USB. USB comes out pretty easy, but the lighter, not so much. I broke something. Well, I broke that, which hopefully if this lasts, I'll never have to use that again. All right, let's flip this around. So to get this out of there, you first have to take the metal inside out, this part out. And there are two holes you see there there's only one tab on this. That's not it. It used to be right there. And you have to push that in, and then you slide this out forward. But when I got it to the point where it would release it, it just snapped right off and went flinging into the oblivion. Then you gotta push in two tabs on here. And as you can see, two tabs to pop it the outside out of that uh, the useless sh shelves the most useless shelves that I've ever seen in a vehicle in my life when you put something in as soon as you hit the gas it go flinging out into the floor kind of like the the wall storage in the back too there. anyway one tab and no tab so I broke two tabs off so this is going to flop around so I got to figure that out you know super glue it or something I don't know sorry if you don't like my commentary um I don't care Just kidding. I hope this is helping you guys out. If it's not, I don't know. I apologize. I'm sorry. I did my best. But if you ask my ex, my best isn't good enough sometimes. If you're wondering why I had to take the, the middle metal part out of this it's because these tabs have to push in to get out and you can't push them in because they're buttered right up against the side of the the metal thing that's the technical term metal thing write that down write that down It's not going to fix itself. My brother-in-law has six of everything that's ever been made, but this has probably been sitting since the 1980s. 
2016 expired. That was only one way to find out. So the uh, plastic weld epoxy, it was still, it wasn't rock hard yet, which I was surprised, but it dried up into what was more like, uh, like, uh, like boogers actually. It's about the consistent consistency. Felt and looked just like boogers. <laughs> yeah, pretty professional on a pop can here, but it's, I'm sorry, a soda can, but that's all I got. But I found uh, some aerospace stuff. He, he worked for a uh, fancy sport airplane company here in town. If you know anything about airplanes, basically like the, the best personal airplane you can buy. So he's got all the good stuff. But this stuff uh, was from 21. I mean, it expired in 21, but you know, it'll probably still work. That was easy to get out. There are two tabs there, two on the bottom, and you just stick your finger inside. Start at the bottom and just, it's kind of hard, but put your finger in there and just push up and part of it pops up and you stick your finger up on top and pull, comes right out. Magic. Well, I pulled it out for no reason because it doesn't fit in it, so I think you're supposed, maybe you're supposed to pull it out so it doesn't get in the way or something, I don't know. I put in, uh, this clicked right in. So when you go to put in your, the two that come with it to go there, make sure you got them facing the right direction, all the same. Otherwise you're gonna be that guy with the upside door, upside down door handle at your house. And your stepdad comes over and makes fun of you. Yet, those are, those are different. Well, that's odd. Why is that? Am I seeing things? Did I do it wrong? No, I did it right. Whoever made this did it wrong. Shame on you, shame. I'm gonna show you guys a little life hack. If you're like me, you absolutely hate Dealing with little tiny screws, especially when it's two o'clock in the morning and you're all shaky from drinking too much uh, Monster. How can I do this? Well, you take yourself a magnet and you just run it lengthwise, the same direction, over and over. You know, if you got two hands, I only have one right now. Well, I have two hands, but you know, one's holding a camera or a telephone, and you just go from there to there. Spin it around and do it about 30 times. No? Well, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> and then, come on. Well, I just did it. Hold on a second. Let's try that again. This time with feelings. Dun, 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 dun. Now, it will lose its magnetism after a while, but I always do that because because then you don't lose little tiny screws. You can pick up big heavy things that weigh way more. Isn't that isn't that neat? You're welcome. I'm sure a lot of you right now are saying, I don't need some blonde jackass Scandinavian idiot with the lumberjack shirt on telling me how to, to do that. I already know that. There's gotta be at least somebody out there that doesn't know that. I didn't know that until I was about half as many as I am now. No, earlier than that. But I figured it out on my own. And then I saw a video on one of those scientific YouTube guys. And I'm like, I already knew that. I think I discovered on accident actually. It's actually 3.21 in the morning, so I've been doing this for, I got here at midnight? Oh well, no, I got here at like 9.30, let the garage heat up, went and talked to my sister, ranted and raved about my ex, <laughs> God bless her, and uh, now it's 3.21, I think I actually start, got started about 11, and I've accomplished probably I was actually working, trying to get it done. 45 minutes worth of work, maybe 20 minutes. Well, if I had, it, if I already knew it, I was, if I had done it before, like probably 10 minutes. 
<laughs> but I had to watch I had to watch videos on how to do it. You know, watch this video on how to remove this piece, but no one's removed that piece yet. So then you got to look for that, and then you remove that. And I just don't want to break anything. And I still broke something. Oh yeah, and I'm waiting for expired epoxy to dry. It seems to be drying though, but it might be a while. I might just have to hang the wire out and plug it in later. Actually, I don't know if I can. That would suck to get it all put back together and I gotta take it all back apart again. Oh. Wah, wah. I don't know why I do that. It's annoying. Wah, wah. Progress, as they say in Canada. I'm making progress. All right, so the, I guess these, uh, the airbag light is actually called a telltale light, according to Phoenix Automotive. It comes with two of these harnesses. Um, I forget what it said, 20 something in newer, 2014, I don't know. Apparently on the, some older models there was two. Not really sure why we wanna know if your driver's was turned off, it's probably not good. But anywho, I just chose the one that was shorter and looked better. Uh, the wires were thicker on this one, but they're both the same thing. And this plugs into that. Next. Remember the Swedish chef on the Muppets? Where he just starts taking things and like throw them in a pile and taking his his rolling pin. He's like, squish, skidoo, skidoo, crunch his stars. That's kind of what I feel like with all these wires. I'm trying to watch their video and he tells them, he tells you what they are in the video, but he doesn't tell you. He doesn't really tell you how to put it all together. So I'm just going to start plugging things in, I think. First, I'm going to look for the ends to see where they go. I mean, see if there's any ones that are the same. And then just start putting them in. And then finding the ones that match in the vehicle. That might be the easiest way, right? I really want to figure out what the SIM card antenna is for, though. If anybody knows what that is, please let me know. It's like... I, I, I don't get it. I mean, I'm a millennial, I guess. Wow. No. No. Yes. No. You have to take these red nipples off. I remember this part. This is if your vehicle isn't equipped with a GPS antenna. Antenna. Depending where you live. Or antenna. So the, the SIM card um, antenna. I use the I use the, the interwebs. Went up to the old... Uh, I went to Yahoo. Because I don't like those left-wing Google. Just kidding. You can have mobile internet in your vehicle. Wow. I sort of figured that's what it was, but uh, why do they call it a SIM card antenna? Why don't they just call it a mobile hotspot antenna? That would make more sense. But I guess that's what it's called. I don't know. I don't make up the rules or the words. I should also note that you have to pay for a separate telephone line, basically, if you're going to do that. So I don't think I'll be doing that. That is ugly, but you know what? I think it's going to work. I mean, I shouldn't have said that. And it's probably not going to work now. It worked! Woohoo! I'm just rubbing that tape down. Don't mind me. Alright, she's back together. It's a little loose though, so what should I do? I don't want to throw any more epoxy on there because then I have to wait, you know, till next month for it to dry. It feels like next month, it's like four in the morning. Uh, um, you know that aluminum tape is pretty nice for heat and stuff. Not that I ever would ever use this for lighting cigars in my vehicle. Not that I ever will probably ever use it ever, considering I have three, three of them, uh, you know, computer plug-in thingies that everybody's using now. Just kidding. You know, why don't they do a USB-C with this? That would make more sense. Don't you think? 
since everything's going to USB-C. Yeah, I'm, I'm not computer illiterate. That's actually what I do for a living. Computers, well, website stuff. I make stupid videos. So I can take 50 times longer to do something that I would take me not 50 times less if I didn't take a video and stuff. I, I, I think I held this one when I was talking about the SIM card antenna. It's actually this one. It's the disc one. So it comes with, comes with tape on it. So uh, maybe I'll mount it like, I don't want to mount it where I can see it. Maybe up against the firewall or something? No. Maybe run it underneath the center council and put it somewhere centrally located where you can't see it. Sure. All right, I peeled the tape and I ran the wire for the SIM card antenna underneath everything, up behind everything, and then it comes up right there and I gave it a little bit of extra length that I didn't tuck in before. And I figured the good spot would be right on the opposite side of this because there's nothing in there. It's plastic, it's clean, and it will give me some decent, uh, decent uh, uh, Wi-Fi signal because it's plastic and something should go through there. So let's stick that to there. And see how long it lasts until it falls down and rattles. <laughs> All right. Neat. So I was right originally. I just had to press down harder. I was afraid. You got to give it a little bit of English. This is for your backup camera and uh, and your brakes. So, you know, you got to have your brakes. And I think this is for an aftermarket camera. Or... And these are for, uh, what? I don't know. Man, this thing is, this thing is intense, man. It's intense. It's like camping. It's intense. All right, we're getting somewhere. This is for an amp and more external cameras. So if you want to hook up, like, undercarriage cameras and a front camera and a camera on the roof and a camera on the wheel that's spinning around and camera on uh, the muffler so it melts and whatever wherever you want to put cameras and uh, subwoofers and amps and put the amp out power right there and front and right and rear and left and top and bottom and this guy goes rot cha tabs facing down let's look for that satisfying click ready not satisfying. It's not satisfying at all. All right, the video is getting confusing. I'm getting to the point where I'm just going to have to just get this done. Let's just start plugging stuff in. But you got to put all these little guys on, which is pretty easy. Except I'm just noticing that there's two white ones that look smaller for some reason. Where do they go? Oh boy. So those go... Oh, there's only two of them. All right, so it goes right here. Let me take that off. All right, I need two hands. I can't get it. I wish I had long fingernails. Do yourself a favor and make sure you trim your fingernails. It's alive. Except, I forgot to put in this piece on the top. You gotta take that off, two screws. And I can't get it to click in in the bottom. But I tell you, if you like playing with ratness, whoo boy. First of all, you gotta put your car, you gotta put it in four high and push this back. Otherwise you don't have enough room. And you got to run all the wires in the dashboard through the bottom hole, I think. That's the only way I could get any of the, any of the ones at, at the bottom to reach, so. 
good times. Let's see if I can get this finished here before uh, the sun comes up. I done broke a sweat pushing that thing in. The fact that I can't really see what I'm doing and my headlamp is kind of going dead isn't helping. But I thought the thing didn't fit and I was about to like find a book of matches. No, I wouldn't do that. I like to think about it though. Um, there's little tabs on the bottom of the out of the main housing that have to slide into little nooks and crannies at the bottom. And if you put the bottom in first, then the tops don't reach the holes. And if you put the top in first and the bottoms don't reach, and you got to basically kind of like finesse it. And it took me like five tries, but I got it. So far, I haven't really done much with it. Um, I kind of want to get this all buttoned up now that I know what I'm doing. I had one wire left over that wasn't plugged into anything or two. There was one on the rate on the head unit that was empty and then there was one it looked like a antenna of some sort so I'm guessing that's for the Sirius satellite radio which this doesn't have. And uh yeah I still gotta still have to like find the uh the extra there's also a sim card reader on the or slot on the back of the unit and uh plus the external one. I never found a place for the OBD2 to go. They said in the video that there's on the harness, you take the OBD2 plug in and you run it. it there's a little black plug in that. There wasn't on my harness at all. So I think they sent me the harness because I bought the Wi Fi. I'm hoping. Confusing though. Instructions would be nice. He left out two pretty important things in the video. Like, why do you have an extra hole? And if you didn't get, why is there no plug-in for the OBD2 thing on mine? Might want to explain that, Phoenix. Pretty please, with sugar on top. <sighs> and the amount of wires this thing comes with, but all the wires that you do need, barely reach. It's probably 30, 40, 50 dollars in copper wires. A little bit longer wires would be cool. Be tidy it up a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to go stop sweating now. Stop beeping. All right, it's 7 a.m. So I'm doing this so all you guys don't have to. Your, your center console trim, when you pull it up, there's a little piece in the front that uh, slides underneath it. Just kind of sits in there loose. You gotta put that in first before you put in the head unit. I didn't do that. And I wasn't gonna rip out the head unit again. So I just kinda squished it in place, but then it was too high. And then I used my little pry tools to like bend the plastic tabs underneath it to fit. And it was, it was ugly, but from what I can tell, there's no, uh, nothing. I'm not gonna say any more of that. I don't wanna jinx it. All right, I'm tired, I'm gonna go home, go to sleep for a few hours, get up and go to work. I'll probably finish this video tomorrow when I learn how to use this thing. So far it's fancy though. Really fancy. Oh, I just put myself in the eye, son of a... Thanks for watching folks. Folks, no, my ninety. It's a bit brisk. I still need to update my, uh, my background there, but anyway. Show you how fast it takes to get to Apple CarPlay. <laughs> it takes that long. Oh, cool. I didn't know you could do that. Nifty. So now everybody knows where I live, so I'm gonna have to cut that part out.
So I peeled off the protective, it comes with, the you know, like everything, every screen has that protective sheet that you pull off. And I was thinking, boy, I sure hope I can find a, a screen protector for this thing. And lo and behold, it has one. I don't know if you can tell, but... <laughs> so it doesn't get smudgy, it's got kind of like a grippiness to it. Here's your automatic climate control. I was under the assumption that I would now have uh, dual, but apparently you don't have dual, but that's okay. I never really used dual before anyway. Um, now you think you'd be able to push these, but you can't. You gotta push the plus minus to move it around. And if you want just the top, you hit that. And it doesn't work in heated seats because heated seats and has the switch down here below, but Anyway, all right, in the settings, I'm trying to make this white match that white. It's RGB, red, green, blue. I'm trying to get it as close as possible here, I'm adjusting them. You can just hit uh, the ambient light color and change through that, but the white was kind of dull, like not bright enough. There we go. That's good, right? And I thought I had my backup camera fixed, but apparently I don't, because it's not working again.